During this time of social isolation and quarantine, we are all stuck indoors and unable to resupply very easily. So I thought it'd be a great time to talk about simple drinks, my favorite top five, three ingredient drinks that you hopefully will have the ingredients to make one of these without having to resupply. And I threw in a few bonus drinks that are just adjacent to three ingredient drinks as well, right after the intro. <laughs> Had a drink. Three ingredient drinks. Uh, number one is the margarita. A lot of people will complicate this drink. I really don't think you should complicate this drink. It doesn't need syrup. It doesn't need sweetener. It doesn't need orange juice, as I, I know a lot of people throw orange juice in it. It needs two ounces of tequila. I like a reposado, but a blanco is fine. I would steer clear of an añejo. One ounce of lime and one ounce of curacao. Shake it up like crazy and serve it in a coupe or any glass you have handy with a little bit of salt on the rim. If you don't like a salted rim, you can throw a little salt in the drink. If you don't like the salt at all, you don't need it. If the salt counts as an ingredient, that's a fourth ingredient, so it's not a three ingredient drink anymore. <laughs> One of my favorite things in the world is a really well-made daiquiri, basically a rum sour. I use two ounces of rum, an ounce of simple syrup, and an ounce of lime juice, I shake them, and I serve it up in a coupe or in whatever is handy. I'll put it in an old-fashioned glass if that's what I got. What kind of rum should you use? So traditionally, this would be a unaged or blanco Cuban rum. You know, something like a Havana Club Three Year is what a lot of people would say here. I actually think that that's a fine way to go, but I prefer something with a little bit of funk to it. I really love a rum barbon court Haitian white. Why? It, it's still clear, but it brings a real different kind of thing. Uh, that coffee still that they use, in it's, it's funky, it's almost Jamaican. And for that matter, I really like a Smith & Cross daiquiri as well. I really don't think you can go too far wrong here, except that maybe if you're using something that's like a very expensive rum, maybe you should save that for something where you're not mixing it with lime and sugar. One of the classic three ingredient drinks is the Negroni. Uh, super popular, very simple to make. Uh, one part Campari, one part London Dry Gin, one part Sweet Vermouth. Equal parts, boom, boom, boom. Stir it up, serve it up, serve it over rock, put a garnish on it, don't, it's your thing. As Gaz Reagan liked to stir it with a finger, it's a very simple drink. Infinite variations on it, of course, um, but the Negroni, absolutely. What do I like in a Negroni? Um, I like Campari for sure, and I definitely like a London Dry Gin. I really think that just about any of them are gonna be fine here. Ford's is fine, Tanqueray is fine, Beef Eater is fine, whatever you got is fine for the most part. And then for the Vermouth, I like either, depending on my mood, something like Punta Mez, or I do like Antica Formula. I think that I probably, tend to go with the Antica here more than alternatives. I like something that it's got a little bit of sweetness, a little bit of vanilla to kind of offset the Campari, which can be very bitter. Campari is a divisive spirit. Not everybody loves it. Not everybody really wants that bitterness. Um, if you want something a little bit less bitter, or quite, quite frankly, a lot less bitter, look at Aperol. Um, Aperol is much less bitter, but in that same family. Um, of course, since you're socially isolating, look at what you have available. The Manhattan is, it's top notch. It began its life kind of, if I'm not mistaken, as like a rye answer to a martini, is a quintessential three ingredient drink. Two ounces of rye, one ounce of sweet vermouth. Of course, I actually do really love Antica formula here. A Dolan Rouge is fine as well. I, I think that any red vermouth you have will be good and two dashes of bitters, Angostura being the um, most typical choice. This is actually a drink where I think that the chocolate mole bitters from The Bitter Truth can be excellent if you have them. If you don't, then you don't. Stir it up, serve it up. If you have a garnish with a cherry or an orange twist, go for it. If you don't, it'll be fine without it. You won't miss it. The Sidecar is a drink that is widely regarded as one of the only good drinks to come out of Prohibition, actually, uh, despite what the mythology about Prohibition will tell you. It's uh, essentially a cognac sour. It is an ounce and a half of cognac, uh, three quarters of an ounce of orange curacao, and three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice. 
shaken uh, vigorously, served up in a coupe or martini glass, rimmed with sugar. I know a lot of people who don't like rimmed drinks, except for a sidecar, so I would not eschew that. If you can, I would rim it. If you really don't want to, then don't. Um, I suppose you could skip the rim in favor of a good splash of simple syrup in the glass. Those are my five three ingredient drinks that I hope that you would have the ingredients for. It's a very short list because I've got a bunch more that are, I would consider honorable mentions. These are really close to being three ingredients, but because there are four kind of parts that I really think are vital, I don't know, it's tough for me to call them a three ingredient drink. Like a whiskey sour, you could make a three ingredient whiskey sour and it would be great. So you could go two ounces of rye and an ounce of simple and an ounce of lemon juice, shake it up, serve it over rocks or not, and you're gonna have a fine drink. But man, once you've got an egg white in a whiskey sour, it is so much better. And I, I really consider it to be a vital ingredient. Once you've got that nice foam on the top, throw a few drops of bitters on your choice. I actually like a Peychaud's or something like that. It has a real nose to it. Uh, Cause as you bring it up to your lips, you get that, that aroma with the drink. It really can be transcendent that way. I've changed my spec over the years. Uh, when I first shot this whiskey sour video, I did it with three quarters of an ounce of lemon and a half an ounce of simple. I would just step up both to one ounce each now, um, or at the very least, I would step up your simple to be in line with the lemon juice. So it's three quarters and three quarters. Uh, the Tom Collins, I was torn about the Tom Collins. Is seltzer an ingredient? Because if it is, it's not a three ingredient drink. A Tom Collins, classic drink, uh, my wife's favorite drink. Two ounces of gin, one ounce of lemon juice, she likes hers with a half an ounce of simple, but I think one ounce of simple syrup is more common. And then top it with seltzer. So your three ingredients plus seltzer. I couldn't really put it into the three ingredient category, but honestly, it's a three ingredient drink. A lot of people will tell you that a martini is effectively a one ingredient drink, that it is gin and a wisp of vermouth, <laughs> if any at all. Um, I strongly disagree. I, I, I prefer my martinis to be made two ounces of a London dry gin one ounce of uh, French vermouth. And I'm spilling it everywhere, as we do on my show. Although, in truth, I actually like a Blanc vermouth. I, I like a little bit of sweetness in it. And two dashes of orange bitters. Uh, Garnish with a twist of lemon. I don't really like olives in my martinis, no matter how they're made. If you're, I like olives, though. So if you rinse the olives off, I will like that martini. I just don't want that oil on my martini. I, don't, I like a crisp martini, not an oily one. But, I, you know, the flavor component of olives plus martini are nice. Um, I just think that the drink itself is better with a lemon twist than with some olives stick sitting in. Uh, and of course, what's in my hand is an old fashioned. Now, a lot of people will make this with a sugar cube, some bitters, and some bourbon. I really think that, you know, and that's three ingredients, but I think that that orange twist is so important. Uh, so if you have an orange, or a lemon, actually. A lemon can be really nice as well. Some kind of citrus that you can spritz over the top of this, you know, a little twist, makes a big difference. Huge, huge improvement. Certainly drinkable without it. It becomes the drink with it, though. Uh, I've covered the old-fashioned a number of ways. Uh, I'm happy to provide all the links I can below here. You can make an old-fashioned with rum. You can make it with uh, tequila or mezcal. You can make it, of course, with bourbon, which is how I prefer it, or with rye. Is it the mother of all cocktails? It might be. but. Is it three ingredients? It's really close. It's really close. All of those bonus drinks are drinks that I think, well, if you've got the three ingredients, you've probably got this too. Uh, but I couldn't in good conscience call them three ingredient drinks. So this is five three ingredient drinks with four honorable mentions, which seems ridiculous, but that's what it is. And I hope that you are sitting tight and keeping the home fires burning and that you are safe and hale and healthy and hearty and well and that you and your loved ones are close, uh, as we all are since we are socially isolating and under quarantine, we are all very close with a select group of people, unless we happen to live alone, which we do not. And that you are weathering the storm as best as can be expected. This old fashioned was made with my old granddad and I just love an old granddad old fashioned. The peanut notes in that are just incredible. Mmm, it's delicious. This episode is built on a bunch of episodes I've, I've shot previously. I'm going to make a playlist out of all of that. So this will be like the header plus those episodes. Uh, check them out or not. Uh, you know, you should spend your quarantine how best you want to spend it. 
I am Greg, this is How to Drink, and you'll find me on Twitter at How to Drink, and on Instagram at How to Drink, and on Patreon at patreon.com slash how to drink. Lately, I've been doing a lot of stuff on Twitch over at twitch.tv slash Greg from HTD. Here in this bar, over at my computer playing games. Sometimes we're doing both. We come over, make some drinks, go play a game. I'm working on getting guests on. There's a lot of things happening at Twitch. I hope you'll check it out. Twitch.tv slash Greg from HTD. And uh, to borrow from Edward R. Murrow, because why not? Good night and good luck.